All right, what's up everybody? Welcome to our channel, Honey Hole Hangout. Sorry we haven't brought y'all a video in a while, but today we have a good one for you. We are going to be tying Joe Cermelli's Master Splinter, but in a bass variation for how we fish in Texas. It's a smaller fly, bash and pan and fish eat it. I got my buddy Gabe on the vise, and we just kind of have a conversation while we tie the flies. Let us know what you think about this format. Since we do the podcast, maybe this is a little bit you know, more fun for you guys when you're watching the videos is if we're having a conversation about fishing and about the fly while we're tying it. So let us know in the comments what you think, and I hope you enjoy the Master Splinter by Joe Cermelli. All right, bud. Well, this is Gabe here. Landon's with me. We're going to be tying up a Master Splinter, which a lot of people see up north, Alaska, steelheading. There's a big fly, but we've condensed it down here for Texas style. Uh, the hook we have right now is a B10S. I think it was a size, what do we pull? Size uh, six. six? Size six, but uh, which is fine. It's a, it's a thicker gap. It's gonna be a popper style pattern. Uh, on top of that, uh, if you have like even a size 10 with a bigger gape, uh, bigger gauge would work fantastic. But uh, Landon, let's jump into this, bud. So this is, uh, I got 140 denier, uh, oop. <laughs> got 140 denier thread here. So I'm assuming Master Splinter, it's a, it's a mouse pattern. It is. From, what, from the name. It is, it's a mouse pattern. Um, it's a larger mouse pattern, but for what we're doing here, you know, summer Texas fishing, bass, bluegill, uh, that's why we're going with a smaller size of it. And with the, that top part, and as you see, it's gonna have a little front, you know, head. Uh, so almost like a gurgler, you're gonna get that, um, you're gonna get that pop, which is nice, you know, and angers fish. The other thing we're gonna use here is a um, Petajan magic tool. I don't know if we can see it here. So we're gonna cut a piece of squirrel and it is a uh, squirrel zonker pine color. We're gonna pop that into our tool. So it looks here. Oh. You can see it. And then we're gonna take the other piece to kind of grab that. The so, clip. Yeah, that clip. And we're gonna leave a little bit on there. That's gonna be our little back tail, but we wanna just pull some of that to make our, our body. So we'll go ahead and cut that off and we'll save that here for later. Gabe, do you know who originally designed this fly? Oh, I forget the guy's name, but we can put it in the, we can put it in the... Uh, uh, It'll be in, in the uh, title. <laughs> in the title, yeah. Yeah, we we'll uh, wanna give credit. Exactly, yeah. Uh, for, I think it's Joe Kalmokazan, I forget, but yeah, it's, we'll we'll put it up there. And his is, like I said, it's it's pretty big, but it's pretty solid, uh, solid fly for the, the size we're putting pulling here. So I'm looking at probably, I don't know, a hook shank, hook shank and a half hanging in the back here as the tail. And, uh, you know, it, do you have to tie it all the way down? No, it's not a huge deal. You can if you want, sky's the limit, you know. But uh, I'm gonna put it about right there. I think I like that. Not as crazy long tail, but with leaving a little bit of that zonker on, uh, it's gonna pulsate, it's gonna move around. It's gonna do some cool stuff for you. Uh, there, so we'll pinch that down. And Gabe, what have you caught on it? What's oh, the nicest dude. fish you've caught on this? Uh, that largemouth bass that's on our Instagram page. Uh, the was, one that you tagged us in like last week? Exactly. You that caught one, that on a Master that, Splinter? That was on a Master Splinter. All right, so I'm gonna come back around. I can't say I've even ever fished a mouse pattern in Texas for bass. Yeah. Exactly. So we're going to pull, or we're going to throw some of that uh, thread around back. Kind of holds the tail up, which is nice. Kind of like that. Um, it's not swinging, less of a chance of foul hooking around it, um, but it's fine. The other thing we're going to pull here is two millimeter uh, fly tying foam in brown. Now, this is uh, the Orvis brand. You can see here, nothing wrong with, you know, getting materials from Walmart or Hobby Lobby, but you can tell a difference within the foam that it's too squishy and it tears easy when you're tying. So I don't really care too much to, to go cheap on the foam and just pay a little extra and get- I go cheap on the foam. 
for, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I just, I can tell the difference when I'm tying, like there's just a little bit more quality to this foam compared it's just, to the it's, dollar store one. It's just one. hard to go to a fly shop and spend $3 on like two small things of foam when you can go to Hobby Lobby and spend $3 on a lifetime supply of foam. True, fair. Hey, look. But to each their own. Yeah. We're, both, we're both different tires. We're both Live different tires. Live your life. Live your life. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little picket fence. And the reason we're gonna do that is by cutting that picket fence there, it's gonna allow us to tie down um, our foam easier. And of course, we're gonna go with it facing towards our tail. So again, we're gonna pop that down. We're gonna get right before it starts to churn. And we'll just tie that there. So you can see kind of where our bend of the hook is happening. That's where we want to have that um, flapping over. And you'll notice sometimes if you go too far forward, you'll you'll see straight shank before it moves. Uh, so just keep in mind. Again, it's not. Is it is it going to affect you catching fish? No, you'll be fine. Uh, it's not a huge deal. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make our our brush of the uh, squirrel zonker that we pulled. So we still have it here in our magic tool. You can use a bulldog clip. You can use a chip clip. Uh, but we'll probably make another video showing what type of tools you can use yeah. on that. What do you use for the Palmer? Your stuff there is. Uh, I use magic clips. There you go. They're just, they're called magic clips for a reason. I mean, they're magic. They're, they're very easy to use. They're right? magically delicious. So what we got here is a dubbing brush from Loon um, to help us kind of uh, spin our, our dubbing. So we're going to put our squirrel within a loop and then we're going to spin it. To, to give us uh, our, our dubbing brush on it. You can split, you can split, some people will split the, the, the thread there, you don't have to. I just like utilizing that tool, it's a little bit easier to do. So we'll... So if you guys can't see, yeah, he looped it around his finger. Yeah. And he's gonna grab it with that tool. It's hard to show on camera, um, since we're so zoomed in so you guys can see the fly but he has it, that loop held in with his finger mm -hmm. and then he's inserting the tool into it and he'll lift it up and show you guys what that looks like. Yeah, you can kind of see here, I've, I've caught the bottom loop there as best we can show you and, and then just tighten it up. And I'm putting my finger kind of in, in the knot so that, or in the loop, so that it holds it open as I slide in our, our squirrel here. So I'll go to about right there. And you can see that. So that squirrel is sitting in between the fibers of the loop that he just created. Exactly. So we're going to just kind of get this a little bit closer and we're going to spread it out just a little bit. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Let's try to get some of these things to work with you. But at this, you know, everything to this point was fairly easy. If there's time that's going to take you in this pattern, it's this part because once you start twisting, you know, you're at the mercy of the twist. And so you want to get kind of the, those fibers you kind of lined up um, to probably about the length of the hook gap is what you want to have um, hanging, hanging right there. But again, you know, it's, it, it's not going to be a huge deal if it's short. It's not going to be a huge deal. If it's it's not, it's still going to catch fish. Yeah, it's still going to catch fish. And the reason it, why we're putting this underbelly here is so that we're going to get some movement out of it. It's gonna give it some nice body. So I'm gonna twist. I'm twisting right now. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but those guard fibers or those fibers are gonna to start to spin. And now we've got this cool little brush here. And you can kind of brush that out. You can kind of pick this, uh, not a huge deal. Some of those little fibers will fall and tighten it just a little bit more. Uh, go there and we should be good there. So now that we've got our brush, I've moved, I've moved our thread up to about, I don't know, a quarter of the hook shank to the eye. So when I'm tying, I kind of try to break up the shank. So middle of the shank, or end of the shank would be here and our, our front. So this is probably the last quarter of that hook shank. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to palmer that forward. brushing back and some be careful of don't catch the point of that hook because you might break your thread and lose everything yeah and it's okay if you do it happens to the best of us it, it, it I, I still do it today 
We're this just going to brush looking it. flag, Gabe. I don't mm -hmm. know if I've ever seen one. And then don't hesitate to kind of lick your fingers, brush that stuff back to kind of get control of that uh, front front part. Okay. So now that I've palmered over our, our deal, our palm over our, our brush, I'm going to hold our loon tool up in the air. So the top part is our, our loon tool holding our loop. The bottom part is our, our bobbin that's just hanging there. Okay. Give it a quick little, you know, wet your fingers, pull that a little bit back to give it control. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw over our bobbin a couple of times between uh, that, um, the hook and our dubbing loop that's up there. And this is catching, this is going to catch our, our dubbing loop. We're going to do that a couple of times. We're going to tie in the front part a couple of times. Now we're locked in place so I can go ahead and make that cut. The other thing I don't like to do is I don't like to come and just completely make a cut. I'll hold my scissors open and kind of right about there and I'll push it through. And that way it limits you accidentally cutting anything that's not important. Ooh, that's Ooh. a good tip. There you go. I'm a straight up cutter. Yeah, no. <laughs> like I just start going to town and then, you know, it's again the material it's, starts coming off. Yeah, it's easy to do, but I've I've done that. I've cut my my bobbin on accident and you know it 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 stinks because you're there, you know, dirty mm -hmm. word, dirty word, because you accidentally cut it. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring over our top part there. So we're going to go ahead and bring that over. You, if you give it a little bit of a bump, it's okay. It's not a problem. We don't want to really pull it tight. We just, you know, just a nice, it's forward and it's fine. I'm going to kind of pinch it. And when I pinch it, I'm going to pinch it downward. And we're going to kind of make our first little uh, cover on it there. Okay. So we've got that one. Show me what it looks like from the top, kid. Yeah. So we've got, so it looks like that. And Perfect. a couple of these patterns too, even the bigger ones, they'll double over, uh, they'll double over the, the foam to give it a little extra buoyancy. Again, I haven't seen, for this size, it's not a huge deal, but when you're tying the larger ones, they're tied with rabbit and the rabbit will soak a lot more water. So that's why you wanna have, you know, double up on the foam. But here, not a huge deal. Um, you know, whatever you wanna do here. So uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make you can see there's our eye. I'm gonna put a little bump in the front and that's gonna go, I don't know, a couple of millimeters forward. But we just wanna bump, again, like you're gonna see with a gurgler. Okay. All right, so now that's there, okay? The next thing you're gonna do uh, is now we're, we're kinda done with our fly here. We're gonna go ahead and uh, and tie this off. But before I do, I really want to make sure that head stays forward and I want to give myself a, an area where I can tie down. So uh, again, by giving us room earlier in the tie, we've got room now in the front part of our um, of our flyer right by the, the eye to tie down. If we get too close, it's hard to tie down. So we'll just tying in the front. So it's locking in in the front, but it's also now allowing that little front head to show and uh, and go from there. So from here we can do um, we can do a half inch. We can do a um, you know a full knot there. You can just whip finish. Whip finish. You could do uh, put a little bit of of uh, up not epoxy but like super glue here and just wrap it zap a gap. But I'm just gonna do a couple little half hitches, which is fine, and lock that in place. And again the same thing here. I'm gonna get my scissors. I'm gonna hold them. I'm just gonna push them through, pops that off. That is such a good tip, holy smokes. And then we're gonna go ahead and make that little back pop. And now we got this little master splinter. It's a smaller one, it's a mini, mini it's master a, it's splinter. It's a Texas size. This is a Texas size master They splinter. say everything's bigger in Texas, but not the mice. Exactly, not the mice. <laughs> but you've got that, this, this uh, the, the back uh, pine squirrel will get wet. And as you're, as you're stripping this, it'll stop or when you stop stripping and that tail will kind of pulsate, move around. Uh, you got this little Dude, fuzziness on the will eat that. You could tie that on like a size eight or 10 even. Exactly. That's what I'm and saying. Like, like the hook I'm usually using is um, a smaller size 10 in a uh, fire hole. I think like a 
5, 16th, I forget the, the, the name, I will put it in the description, but right now this B10S is fine. This will allow us to kind of get away from catching smaller bluegills and into nice size, you know, 12 inch mm -hmm. bigger bass with that bigger hook style will be fine but don't be surprised if you get a nice panfish that's really aggressive and hit itself yeah um but yeah there you go that is a master splinter all right everybody i hope you enjoyed that video we have a podcast called honey hill hangout it'll be linked in the description we have a store blog all kinds of stuff we have a discord you can join all that stuff is going to be linked below we have our link tree below anyway if you enjoyed our content hit that like and subscribe button We'll see you guys on the next video and we'll see you out on the water. Bye.